Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan J. Reinhardt from Wargaming Recon. I want to thank all of you for joining me today. It is another pandemic coffee break. Today is April 1st, 2020. I have my Tim Hortons mug. No, we are not sponsored by them, but darn it, I sure wish we were with some hot, well, it's lukewarm now, Earl Grey tea that's decaf. Uh, I got some cream and Splenda in there. I'd love to know what you're drinking as well. Mm -hmm. I really do love my tea. It's good stuff. So today uh, is the first day of a new month, right? So that's really cool. Uh, so all sorts of neat things that can happen. And another day and another month as we climb further into and hopefully are getting closer, I hope, to seeing the end of lockdown kind of stuff. I know that um, uh, Maine has just initiated a whole uh, shelter in place thing where everyone's required almost everyone is required to stay at home uh, crossroad games had an update yesterday on their facebook page all about that where they talked about basically and i felt so bad for them for brendan but uh brendan spent all this time trying to track down shipments and stuff so they could get some product in and then get it out to everyone and then uh got it all arranged with the ups and everything and then the lockdown came uh, uh so he thinks it's like 24 hours to go so that would mean today april 1st no joke is the um last time people can probably get stuff from them but they might still be able to ship things so i'm not 100 percent positive about that but this stuff's happening everywhere we're all trying to flatten the curve and do what we can to help out and just make life a little better and easier and one thing that we do here at william recon is we're doing these pandemic coffee breaks mm, tea <laughs> I need it. I really do. So, uh, my eldest thought it would be really fun to do my hair today. She wanted to do my wife's hair, and my wife had a meeting, and I said, sure, you can go ahead and do my hair. So, I get a pretty bow, and, oh yeah, I got one thing here. She gave me a pig tail, and, oh yeah, there's another one. So, I'm very fashionable today. <laughs> I told her I would keep it in, you uh, know, the thing you do when you have kids, right? So there's that. Um, I want to start off by telling everyone that there's some really uh, heartwarming news out of Frog God Games. So Bill Webb is the owner over there, and he announced, I guess technically yesterday, he put this uh, thing up on Facebook, and I want to share with uh, everyone. Uh, so I'm actually going to read it. It says, wanted everyone to know that Frog God Games with our 1970s technology can still deliver print products to you. Please help us out and make sure our freelancers have work to do. We are solvent and not going anywhere, but Zach, Matt, and I have laid ourselves off to make sure we can pay our freelancers. <laughs> we can sell not only PDFs, but also real books. Warehouse staff is all living with me for the last three weeks. No one is sick. Besides, we have a 50% off sale going for all of you who have got eaten by the stock market crash. That being said, we have had to stop work on many projects due to uncertainty. Our freelancers will continue to get paid before any of us do, and many of them really need the cash. I know it's tough out there, and we will weather this, but any help you can give us benefits our artist pool and our writers. None of the owners will take a dime unless we pay them first. Besides, what else will you do while you are stuck in quarantine? <laughs> so, Bill, I think that's fantastic. Good morning, Rob. Uh, so I think that's fantastic, Bill, that over Frog God Games, making sure all your freelancers get paid first. If you want to participate in the sale, and if you're not familiar, Frog God Games has a variety of like role-playing game kind of stuff. So they do some Pathfinder. They do things that are not for any particular system they do fifth edition sort of sorcery they have accessories like players aids and maps and all that kind of stuff um so if you're into any of that and you want to get that discount you have to use coupon code and this is all lowercase special gary con five zero so you put that in a checkout and you get half off everything and i gotta say that um i uh was looking and they have a role playing game about bunnies and I really think I need to get this. It's called Bunnies and Burrows and you can either get it as a PDF which is 24.99 or they have it um 
as a hardcover, and all their hardcovers come with PDFs. So the hardcover is $44.99. So really, for the price of a hard um, price of a PDF, you can get the hardcover and PDF, and they'll ship it. I mean, there's uh, shipping involved, right? But the blurb about the game, uh, this is, just, <laughs> I love this. So I'm actually, I'm just going to read the whole thing. It says, Frog God Games has partnered with Dr. B. Dennis Sestair and Dr. Scott R. Robinson to return a venerable and influential piece of tabletop role-playing games to print. This tactical role-playing game contains over 200 pages of full-color adventures in the style of Red Wall and Watership Down. Yay! In addition to full-color illustrations by, and it lists a whole lot of people, it includes a map of the known world. Okay, the world is pretty small when you're a bunny. Practical uh, printable, sorry, tactical maps and animal tokens for various encounter types and scenarios contained within the printable PDF of Bunnies and Burrows. And here's a history of uh, rabbits and role-playing. Bunnies and Burrows is a role-playing game that features animal characters contending with enemies and hazards in a world of nature. Published by Fantasy Games Unlimited in 1976, the game centered on intelligent rabbits. It introduced several inv innovations to role-playing game design, being the very first game to allow players to have non-humanoid roles and the first to have detailed martial arts and skill systems. Fantasy Games Unlimited published a second edition of the game in 1982, and the game was modified and republished by Steve Jackson Games as an official GURPS supplement in 1992. As Rabbit's players, player characters are faced with dangers mirroring those in the real world. The only true quote-unquote monsters in the game are humans. Surprise, surprise. But there are many predators, traps, and natural hazards. The character's position in the food chain promotes an emphasis on role-playing and problem-solving over combat. And this just sounds so delightful that I, I really, really want bunnies and burrows. And I'm actually thinking how perfect it would be to get this, right? Which I haven't bought yet, but I think I'm going to. And then use bunny figs from Bad Squiddo Games. That just, I don't know, it gets me more excited than I've ever been about a role-playing game, or at least any time recently. Uh, so, Bunnies and Burrows is just delightful for me. And um, like I said, for half off, 50% off, um, you, again, the, you can get hardcover, which comes with the PDF. It's $44.99, or just a PDF is um, $24.99. Uh, and either one would be half off. Um, so you can get that and save some money. Uh, and then they also have like other stuff for bunnies and burrows uh, on the um, on their website. So I'm just I'm going through. So they have bunnies and burrows light, which is um, I'm just pulling up. It's just like a fast paced kind of thing. So it's uh, four page rules, two battle boards, PDFs, and it's intended for. Um, Basically, younger people, young and old, they say, but I'm going to say for younger people. And then they have, like, scenarios. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so these are really funny. They get the Garden Raid. So we know what that's based off. The Fairy Ring of the Nibble Onions. The Mound of the Basking Vultures. <laughs> Love it. And Shadow Deep. <laughs> Escape from Fox Island. Uh, each of those are $7.99, which would also be, you know, half off with that coupon code. And then they get the Bunnies and Burrows Print Pack, which is a PDF. It retails for one dollar, and the print pack is printer-ready maps, tokens, and reference sheets. So you could really go whole hog. There's no bunny version of whole hog, but you could go whole hog on bunnies. And you might know I have bunnies. I have too many lops, and man, I love bunnies. I really do. So that's awesome. Um, Crisis Point War Games says, "God, I remember bunnies and burrows from back in the early '80s. Uh, I was just a wee lad at that time." So I do not, but I am, oh man, I'm so, so excited about it. Uh, Rob says, Warlord is no longer shipping to the United States. Any other news about shipments across the Atlantic? So as far as I know, um, most UK companies that are non-essential have to shut down operations. So that means Games Workshop is closed. Uh, they're not shipping to anywhere. That means uh, also Warlord Games, of course. But if their mail order... They can do it. So in the case of those two, if they were like a mom and pop shop, you could still get stuff. Uh, and so that means like two fat lardies. You can still get things from them. You can still get stuff from Henry Hyde over at Gladius Publications slash, War, um, slash uh, Battle Games. Um, the Perry Brothers, I believe, are still shipping stuff out of their home, uh, I think. 
uh, if they have things there or a few stuff but um i know if they don't have it they will send it as soon as they can reopen or they're going to give people a, a refund you just have to contact them so that's for the perries and of course bad scoto games is still doing because i placed an order and as i talked about yesterday uh, i'm getting some free stuff for uh, a good coloring pages and things and she's just so sweet uh so let me be all happy inside <laughs> and bunnies bunnies and burrows that's awesome oh man i i really need to get bunnies and burrows and i probably will never play it but just i, I need it <laughs> so i think you should head on over to froggodgames.com click on product lines uh i'm gonna say go click on bunnies and burrows and buy some stuff and then make sure you use that coupon code. I want to make sure I tell you what it is uh, correctly, so you get half off. It's um, special Gary Con five zero. So use that at checkout, and you get fifty percent off all web store items. And there's no, they don't give an end date for it, so I don't quite know what the end date is. But I would say don't wait, use it now. And while all the pandemic stuff has been going on, there's been another cool. Thing happening that uh, I've been wanting to talk about all week, but I've been pushing it off a little bit. So there's this gaming company app thing that um, a buddy of mine, Dave Valentine, uh, is doing, and they've been pushing off a Kickstarter for it. They're still going to be doing Kickstarter, but they've a lot done a soft launch. You can go on Facebook. It's called Application of Force. And they have a whole website for it at applicationofforce.com. And what they've done is, first of all, uh, everyone, because of the pandemic, everyone who signs up gets a free month of using this. Uh, it's like a membership kind of thing. Uh, but you get a free month of using it. And I'm trying to remember my username and password because I want to, um, I guess I don't need a login for this. Um, so what they've done is they've developed a bunch of different games. A lot of these you can solo, uh, but they... Basically, all use some sort of web app, which you can then use on like an, um, an you know, an iPad, a, a Kindle, like a, a tablet or a smartphone. So if you, they recommend a tablet, of course, but you could use, you know, your iPhone or Apple um, Android device or whatever. And to play these games. Uh, and so I just I want to run through some of these. And Dave was talking to me about this. And she's talked to me a few times about this. Uh, so at the Makers Fair uh, game day, Makerspace uh, game day. Uh, he mentioned it, and then also he talked about it at the uh, last, I guess they were both last year, weren't they, at the uh, Hobby Bunker uh, Summer Game Day. Uh, so the first game is a traditional competitive game, uh, and says these are traditional miniature game war games where the players assume the roles of opposing commanders and fight it out on the tabletop. They may benefit from having a game master, but they don't require it. So right now they have a game called Victoria, a game of Victorian and Edwardian adventure set in um, 1900 Europe, the rules play more like traditional colonial games than they do current crop of steampunk. You can recreate the Prussian 1910 invasion of Britain, rescue the prisoner of Zenda from those devious Ruritanian plotters, or refight any number of other conflicts that never happened but should have. Uh, the app replaces all chart and table lookups, but uses a traditional handful of six-sided dice. Uh, they say you should use it with 25 mil figures, but you can adapt it to 15. It has its own setting for solo cooperative play if desired. And then they have a tabletop campaign where it gives you a whole campaign framework for all the battles and everything. Some campaigns you can complete in a single gaming session. Um, so right now, coming soon is Powder and Mask, uh, where there's like a band of highway highwaymen and rogues, where there's extortion and blackmail and cattle theft and kidnapping and highway robbery. Again, it's a 25, 20 millimeter uh, game, but you can do it in 15. Uh, and then they have... A couple where you play against the machine. Uh, so this is you versus computer. These really are solo um, games. The other side of the hill. So it's kind of like Sharp. Uh, Richard Sharp from um, <laughs> the Cornwall novels. With the Peninsula War. Uh, and you use 100 to 150 figures. Uh, and 25 mil. But you can do it in other scales. And uh, there's just like all sorts of different stuff on that. And then there's another one called. With the Colors in the Late War being an account of the regiment's adventures and the recent continental unpleasantness. So it's a traditional toy soldier game. Uh, they play with 54 millimeter glossy figs. Each player runs a single force of a dozen or two soldiers against an unspecified continental opponent played by the computer. The game is set in the war that Edwardian children fought out on the living room floor. 
Uh, and you can win a Victoria Cross or get unjustly cashiered for cowardice. Lots of six-sided dice, ultra simple rules. It's a quick, fun game, suitable for adults and kids. Uh, and they have a dice roller and a multiplayer dice roller as well. And they're doing other stuff and adding other things. And they will be a Kickstarter at a later point uh, for it as well. Adam mentions the Bad Squiddle coloring book is a free download. That's right. Uh, you're 100% correct. They actually have two coloring books that you can get that are free. You add them to your cart and you check out, but they don't cost anything. And then because of the pandemic, if you buy anything, literally anything, I bought bunnies, but you buy anything and you add the coloring books to the cart, uh, you can put a note saying if you need like colored pencils or paper because maybe you can't get to an office supply store, maybe they're closed or whatever. You might not have these things. Annie will send them to you for free. So I just think that's really sweet. And their stuff is gorgeous anyway. This is my first order with Bad Squiddo. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. With Bad Squiddo. And of course I had to buy bunnies because bunnies, <laughs> they make me so happy. Uh, so bunnies are the thing as well. Good morning, Jamie. Thank you for joining us. And um, bunnies. Uh, but yeah, you can totally just uh, download the PDFs uh, of the coloring stuff for free. And there's another one that I wanted to mention yesterday, um, and I forgot about it, honestly. Uh, so I'm going to mention it now for if you're looking for coloring stuff for if you have littles in your life, so, uh, small children, or even for yourself, because adult coloring is still a thing. And um, this is not a joke, so I'm just, I want to pull it up, make sure I get the right uh, link here for everyone. So I'm going back to where I first saw it on Twitter. Here we go. So John Scrivens has free coloring um, pages. And uh, it's at johnscrivens.com. And you click on, uh, at the top it says free coloring pages. So you save each one. They're a different image. Then you save it and then you just print it out. So he has a My Little Pony and a Pikachu. There's some, I don't know, zombie looking stuff. He has... Uh, orcs looking things and trolls and some a space between dreadnought and uh commissar and is that a termagant it might be a homergant uh from tyranids and i think that's a night gobbo he has yeah because the mushrooms and uh, i think this is a murloc maybe from world of warcraft uh, so he has a variety of things there that you can print out and you can color if you like as well rob says iced coffee in turvis university of florida cup um, are they the Gators, Rob? Uh, I can't remember, but I'm going to say they're the Gators. Tim Hortons, the Canadians? No, I'm joking. Um, Tim Hortons is from Canada. I love Tim Hortons. I'm so sad still that they're not in Maine anymore. That's one of my most exciting things, um, undiscovered things, um, when we went to Portland for the first time for Huzzah, was discovering that there was a Tim Hortons. So we came back that year. My, uh, I said to my wife, well, uh, oh, no, the year we came back, um, after there wasn't any Tim Hortons, um, and I said to my wife, well, I guess that means we're never going there anymore. And she's like, really? You're going to give up going to the convention because there's no Tim Hortons? She thought it was serious, but I was joking because, I mean, that's just crazy. <gasps> oh, University of Florida is the Gators. Go Gators. Way to go. And Adam says, Annie is great. I agree. So um, Annie's coming on the show. <laughs> I'm really excited. She's coming on the podcast. Uh, we're just working out the schedule on that, but she's going to be coming on and talking about all sorts of stuff. So that's just really awesome and amazing so i'm very very excited about that uh and we got other guests coming on too uh i guess i should promo some stuff right instead of just talking your ears off about bunnies because i mean bunnies are great though so the i'm gonna talk more about bunnies because why the heck not i can do it uh so the other night i was i was feeling a little down um it's like the first time really for a little while i'm just i want to get a picture i want to show everyone uh so i was feeling a little down and um Generally, all, oddly enough, with, despite the pandemic and everything, my mental health has been pretty good. Uh, and I think this whole, like, not actually going into work but working from home is doing wonders for me. <laughs> like, I'm really, really happy. Uh, but that night, I just, I was a little down. And my wife was a little down, too. Uh, so I went and I, I scooped one of our bunnies up from, they live uh, in this big dog playpen. It's huge. And so they just hop around there all day and then we can let them out or whatever. Uh, so I scooped up uh, one of them. Uh, her name's Sally, and brought her over and uh, made a bunny burrito and put her on the couch. And so my wife was patting her and hugging her and stuff. Then my wife had to do some work. So then I took her and I was hugging her and it was just, it was absolutely delightful. So I just snuggled her for like a good 45 minutes or an hour 
And so here's a picture I took. It's probably going to come across awful. Ah, uh, there you go. Of me <laughs> at like, I don't know, 1130 at night or whatever, just snuggling my bunny. <laughs> and I just, I love bunnies so much. I, I never thought I'd be a bunny guy. When we got married, my wife and I, we were like, well, let's get a pet. And we didn't quite know what to get. I wanted something small. Uh, and at the time, we were living with my parents the first six months because my wife still had to wait for her, her, our apartment lease to end. And um, she's like, how about we get a bunny? And I was like, I don't know. I guess. Why not? Uh, so we went to a nearby farm. And they had these bunnies um, that they don't regularly breed, but like they just happen to have. And so we got that bunny, Sally, and brought her home. She was like, I don't know, eight weeks old or something like that. Just this tiny little munchkin. And then later on, we ended up getting her brother because the farm had him. Someone, I guess, had uh, gone at him and then they were moving and they returned him. I was like, who returns a bunny? It's just, I mean, it's better than what they could have done, I guess. But just it made me really sad. So I used to go on my lunch break and I'd go visit him because <laughs> the farm is not too far from where I work. And I just, I'd go in and hang out. I'd talk to him and I'd visit him. And every night I'd tell my wife, so I visited this bunny and <laughs> and she's like, we don't need another bunny. And then like she came and she's like, oh, they returned him. And she's getting, <laughs> I love bunnies. <laughs> uh, and so um, we ended up with him too, Malcolm, <laughs> after Malcolm Reynolds. <laughs> So we have Sally and Malcolm, and I just, I love bunnies so much, and now I'm such a bunny guy. It's really crazy. Um, I'm a softie about all that kind of stuff. So bunnies are great. Um, I was going to tell you something. Oh, I was going to promote something. <laughs> I was all excited about bunnies uh, that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't think about what I was going to promote. And now I forgot it because <laughs> bunnies are awesome. Oh, man. Well, let me go to some um, comments that we've gotten from some people. So... I've been putting, I've been not so good about being timely, but putting these uh, pandemic coffee breaks up on YouTube. I was doing really well and now I haven't. So I apologize for that. Uh, but on the one from March 26th, there were some comments. So James Browning says, I like my coffee black and the darker, the better. No cream, no sugar, nothing, just coffee. The bonus is that it is only five calories a cup. I also eat just about everything swimming in Tabasco sauce. I have Uncle Sam to thank for both of those habits. Keep up the good work, Jonathan. I'm glad to see that you are doing well. Love the Coffee Break videos. So, James, thank you for writing in. Um, my dad was in the Navy many, 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 many years. 23, I think? 23 years. Um, U.S. Navy, he retired as a, a CPO Chief Petty Officer. Uh, interesting fact, I am an honorary uh, Chief Petty Officer of the U.S. Navy. So, who knew? Uh, and he used to tell me stories about Navy coffee and just how black and empty it was and just how awful. So he, now he, he doesn't do sugar cause that makes it too sweet, but he does put cream in his coffee. And I was surprised he does not like Starbucks coffee at all. And I thought he would cause it's so strong. And I figured, you know, it must remind him of Navy coffee, but it must be a bad memory. <laughs> so, uh, Navy coffee is not a good thing for him. Uh, and <laughs> It's just, it's funny, the memories we have about things. Uh, coffee, for example. And then um, Ivor Cogdell says, Hi again, Big J. Thanks for the mention in the previous episode. You thought I was talking about highlights for the outhouse. I did. But I meant your Japanese barn with the cloth front from a few days back that you had added flock to in the front. It's um, uh, uh, barracks, um, the tent barracks, I believe is what it's called, from things from the basement. Uh, he says, I was thinking the back wall on the inside may need to be lighter to show up better. A quick shout out to curry flavor pot noodle. Take care, everybody. So curry flavor pot noodle, shout out. Woo! Um, I've never had it, but if you like it, then awesome. And thank you for writing in. And uh, I spoke with someone else recently who was uh, just saying how much I really appreciate these coffee breaks and that it helps them a lot to deal with the pandemic and you know all the mental issues that come with it but also like the isolation and everything too and that's one thing that we really want to do here and that we want to combat and so one way that we're doing that is in addition to this um these daily pandemic coffee breaks is we're doing that uh netflix watch party so yesterday i announced as i tried to find it again um that i was the tiebreaker and then someone went and voted afterwards which i was like seriously dude <laughs> You made it a tie again. Uh, so I was the tiebreaker. And we are officially watching um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. 
So I will be streaming it on Thursday, April, today's Wednesday, April 2nd, tomorrow. I'm streaming it April and tomorrow, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You do not need Netflix to watch. It's just, it's not something you need. You would think you would, right? But you absolutely don't. Um, so I will post a link on our fan club page and on Twitter and on the Facebook page here that you just click and it'll bring you to it. So at uh, eight o'clock, you can go ahead and you can um, watch the film with us. And then if you have Google Chrome as your web browser, and I suggest you get it if you don't, uh, it's free. So if you use that or install it, and then if you also install the free Netflix party plugin for Chrome, uh, and I'll have links to all of those as well. Uh, if you do all of this, um, you click the link, and then once the stream is started and the movie started, and near that top of your address bar in your Google Chrome browser, you're going to see there's a little like NP icon. If you click on that, it'll then like refresh the stream and add a chat window. And that chat window will allow you to talk with all of us. Hey, Pete. Good morning, Nathan. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, so you can do that and click on the NP for the um, uh, Netflix party. So that way you can chat with us as we watch uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. These watch parties are a lot of fun. I've gone to one that actually Peter's run with the Mythwits. Uh, and he's doing another one tonight for Austin Powers and Goldmember. And Friday, he's doing a watch party for Flash Gordon. And so it should be a lot of fun. Um, uh, Nathan, don't worry. You're not here just for the party to end. Uh, things did get a little bit of a later start today. Uh, my wife had a 10 a.m. meeting, and so I actually got shoved backwards a lot. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this isn't going to end just yet. Don't worry. Uh, I do still have some other stuff I want to cover, so my coffee break might be a little bit longer today. Shh, don't tell my boss. <laughs> so Peter says, Flash Friday. Yeah, Flash Gordon Friday. It should be fun. Uh, so tonight, Austin Powers and Gold Member, Mythwits is doing that. Check out their Facebook page. Uh, we'll share it as well. And Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll have links going out for Prince uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, which should be fun. I can mention it to my wife, and my wife's like, maybe I'll watch it, because she loves a good Alan Rickman movie. Uh, so you can be in the chat, and just like you're at the movie theaters, but you're allowed to talk. So that's kind of good. Uh, and then Friday's Flash Gordon. So that's some cool stuff. Uh, we talked about Frog God Games, which is awesome, 50% off. And then we sent out our uh, monthly newsletter uh, yesterday to everyone. So the April newsletter went out. Uh, if you want to get it and you don't get the newsletter, please get in touch with me. I'll give you a link so you can sign up or I can sign you up. But I just need your permission to do so because we don't add people unless you say you want to be added. Because otherwise it's spammy and that's just not something we would do because, I mean, that's not nice. Um mentioned yesterday about the giveaway we're doing so please subscribe to the youtube channel and then i want to cover a couple gaming things uh with everyone as well so the first gaming thing i want to cover um <laughs> pete says i'll be watching with my spoon <laughs> and Nathan says watch from the bathroom <laughs> you know, funny stuff um so i've made some progress on the pig pen so the pig pen has a roof and then you add these extra things in on top for however you want the fencing is in look at that and a neat thing about this is when you do the fencing you add these posts afterwards which you can't really see but that's okay um on the inside come on the posts get added in afterwards uh and it was a little fiddly but i used my tweezers which i highly recommend and then uh i did have some trouble though because i did the basing at the beginning all this before I put all the fencing in because normally it's easier that way with this one it wasn't so I actually had to get like a, a knife out hobby knife and scrape stuff away and like dig in to really make things fit better and then I had to reapply <laughs> so that was kind of a bit of a pain so this piece is done other than some touch-ups and then I got to do dry brushing and everything and then I decided well you know I'm going to start on the horse trough and this is a pain in the neck for me so I've discovered with any of these pieces from things in the basement we're really like there's nothing that's secured to it's just you doing it it's really hard so you have this bottom piece and then you have these two pieces that go into it so you want to make sure that it's straight and then you're trying to put these in on the sides so i'm trying to do all of this and get it to go and it's collapsing on itself over and over and over again which is the same problem i had with the outhouse 
And hi, Mark. Good morning. Um, and ultimately, I got it to this point after like five tries. It was late at night last night. I said enough's enough. Uh, and so now that it's set, I'm going to try putting these walls on. And of course, nothing lines up just exactly right. Like you got to slot it in and stuff. And it's mostly my fault, I'm sure. Uh, not yours, but darn, it's frustrating. So if anyone has any tips for me, I'd love some good tips on how to be better at this is basically what it is because I'm just I have issues but I will say uh, after the horse trough is done then I have a bunch of fencing to do and then the uh, livestock animal kits are done for the buildings for the uh, Russian village so that's really exciting um, to do and at that point I'm gonna have to go back and assemble something else and I'm thinking I should go back and I don't have it handy, so I'm not going to get up and get it, but I'm thinking I should go back and do that feudal Japanese building that I forgot about. So that's just something I'm thinking uh, might be a necessity as well. Um, and I just looking around to see if there's anything else that I'm forgetting. I think that might be it uh, for today. Um, please join me tomorrow at 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I don't think we're being pushed back. I think 10.30 is going to be good. With your beverage, tell me what you're drinking. Uh, even if it's, you know, an adult beverage, I'm not going to judge you. Pandemic, right? This is just tea. It's cold now, though. Uh, Got to warm that up. Mark says, while the glue is still tacky, put all four sides together and use rubber bands and clothespins when you can. I will say, I tried that with the outhouse and then I failed. <laughs> so I was scared to do it with this. Because it was free, the rubber bands would put too much tension on it. Uh, and so I let this set for a while. And then I tried doing the sides. And it collapsed like eight times on me. Not literally, but it was a lot. And I was like, oh, man. So that was rough. Uh, but there's that. And, um, yeah, that was just, it was hard. Uh, and, I mean, I guess clothespins could work. But I don't quite know, like on this one anyway, how they would help. Because, like, if you got this you probably can't see it very well because you I'm holding it like but like it doesn't line up quite and so you're trying to get it in and then there's nowhere really for the clothespin to go I don't know uh, that's just me uh, and I will say uh, because this is April 1st I was going to do an April Fool's on all of you and I was going to do exact same thing I had done like a year or two ago but I decided that would just be mean especially in light of everything so if you don't remember about a year or two ago on April Fool's Day April 1st I put this post up. Um, Mark, yes, please make a tutorial video. Uh, I put a post up just announcing that I was closing down everything and that, you know, it's been a good run, but like I just, I can't do it anymore. It's been too hard for me. And that how grateful I am for everyone. And it's been a great ride and I'll miss everyone, but I have to close the curtain and move on uh, for my own health and betterment because things just aren't so great. And I was going to do that again. I was going to get all heartfelt <laughs> and just get, I can get very emotive. <laughs> and I just, I was going to really lean into it. And I was like, no, that's just, that's me. Like, first of all, doing it once is bad enough. And it's not even a funny thing. But then doing it twice, one year after another, and in light of all this other stuff going on in the world, uh, <laughs> I, just, I was like, that's not very nice. So I do not have an April Fool's thing for you at all, unless you count. The kids decorating my hair as a joke. <laughs> In which case, April Fools. I mean, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, but just a recap for everyone. Froggodgames.com. 50% off. You want to use promo code SpecialGaryCon5050 at checkout. Make sure you buy Bunnies and Burrows. That's what I'm going to pick up. <laughs> if you buy the hardcover and PDF, you get it for less than the, price of, than the normal price of the PDF. So I would say do that because that's pretty awesome uh you can get extra not extra but you can get um coloring pages from john scrivens at john scrivens.com click on free coloring pages there's really cool stuff there annie at bad squirtle games has two sets of coloring books all free pdfs you add them to your cart check out they don't cost you anything but if you need coloring pencils or paper because you can't get to it um buy anything else buy bunnies buy anything else from bad squirtle games and the coloring pages and then put a note in saying you'd like the coloring stuff too and she'll mail it to you for free 
um, like the pencils and the paper, like she's not charging you for it. So that's awesome. And then application of force, be sure you check that out application of force.com. So you can do solo gaming at home. It's really cool. I talked about things in the basement and I don't think I mentioned they actually have, um, one more new thing, which I'm going to pull up right now. Um, I know I said it was ending, but this is actually pretty cool. So I'm going to pull it right now. Uh, come on. They posted in our fan club page. Um, so they have, they've been doing the pandemic specials where you get like a small something for $19, um, usually including free shipping to continental United States. Sorry, I got a thing I throw. Uh, and so they've just done another one where you get four big biohazard signs, one small biohazard sign and 16 police barricades, which are all 28 millimeters scale, including shipping in continental United States is $19 use promo code biohazard that's all caps at things in the basement.com and you can get that at a good price uh 19 bucks is really good <laughs> so i would suggest that uh and then i let loose earlier that annie from bad school games is going to be coming on the podcast we're just finalizing scheduling duncan rhodes has booked himself formerly a games workshop henry hyde has booked himself formerly a games workshop i was brave and i reached out to the perry brothers and they've agreed to come on the show, <laughs> which I'm so excited about. They were also normal about it too. They were like, uh, yeah, we'll make it happen. But you know, we're in lockdown right now. So let's wait until after. So that way we can both be on. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was all excited uh, about them both coming on. So <laughs> it's weird that they feel it. It came across as completely normal. So I'm like, why wouldn't Jonathan ask us? And like, <laughs> why would you reply and be so nice and say yes? I don't know. I just, I still feel weird about all of this. Man, one day maybe I'll just be like, yeah, I belong. But today is not that day. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, remember, everyone, listen to the experts, the scientists, the doctors, the professionals who know what they're talking about with the pandemic. Not Karen from Facebook talking about her healing stones and how she covered herself in mud and stared at a the sun for five hours to determine what is safe and not safe uh listen to the experts uh mark says yes i love the berry brothers they are they're just so nice they're wonderful people they've had some really good videos coming out lately too which we'll talk about tomorrow <laughs> get to save content for every day don't we huh uh, so listen to the experts as well please be kind to one another and yourself be good do some good in the world be safe be smart stay healthy please uh, we will be back with another pandemic coffee break tomorrow. We're doing these Monday through Friday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless things have to change. So we set all that up. There's events in Facebook for all of these, uh, so you can sign up for those so that we get reminders about them. And we get more podcast episodes coming. We have more of everything coming. So just all sorts of stuff. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and that you're safe and healthy. So remember... No matter how busy you are, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how much time you're thinking, man, I really, really need to play Bunnies and Burrows. <laughs> you know that you have to. You gotta. You need to. That's right. Keep on gaming. Thanks, everyone. Be well.